booktube. I promised this video quite a while ago and I am really sorry for the delay. Thank you so much for your patience and understanding with this hiatus. So without further ado, I'm going to review Starting Point by Hayao Miyazaki, which as of now is by far my favorite book on animation. So to start out, I used this book as a resource for my final paper in graduate school, which was about movement across multiple platforms in animation, uh, which Hayao Miyazaki talks a lot about in this book in a very engaging way. For example, he talks about how some companies like Walt Disney rely on stage acting and live models in order to create a formula of movement, while other companies like Studio Ghibli rely on intuition as opposed to live models and how movement feels instead of how it looks. So I just wanted to mention that, that this book is a really great resource for animation papers. For me, this was one of the most fascinating parts of this book. One of the most fascinating parts of this book. There are so many. This book is one of my favorites. I would definitely consider Starting Point a form of creative nonfiction, but it's definitely more of a collection than it is a memoir. So it's made up of interviews, magazine articles, film reviews, transcripts from speeches, that he gave at university lectures. It also has a lot of planning notes and proposals from Miyazaki's films, as well as a chronology of Miyazaki's life. A brief, early brief chronology. Because this book goes from 1979 to 1996, it doesn't cover all of Miyazaki's works, but it covers a lot of his famous works. These works include Panda Go Panda, Lupin the Third, Castle in the Sky, My Neighbor Totoro, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, Porco Rosso, Whisper of the Heart, which he didn't direct but he did produce, and Kiki's Delivery Service. Can't forget about that one. The foreword of this book is written by John Lasseter, chief creative director of Pixar Animation Studios, and the afterword is written by Isao Takahata, who is co-founder of Studio Ghibli, and he also directed Only Yesterday, which is a wonderful film, and Grave of the Fireflies, which is also a really great film. I want to point out that I'm not often impressed, if ever, by forewords and afterwords, but I would definitely not skip over the forward and afterward and starting point. Both the forward and afterward are carefully worded, but also really fun to read. Uh, John Lasseter talks a lot about uh, Miyazaki's film techniques and how these techniques influence his works at Pixar Animation Studios, and Isao Takahata's after takes a completely different approach and talks about Miyazaki's work habits and personality traits. Starting Point is almost 500 pages long. I love it. I've read it twice already. I've sticky noted it so much. I have a huge list of concepts that Miyazaki talks about that fascinate me, and I'll briefly mention a few without going into spoilers. One of my favorite concepts he talks about is the concept of yearning for a lost world, which I'll save for you guys to read about because I don't want to give it away. He talks a lot about different forms of animation, for example how western animation differs from eastern animation. He also talks about how to bring truth into fiction while also realizing that fiction is an illusion. He goes into the animation production process and how it works as well as how the role of an animator has changed over time and how the production process has changed over time as well as his opinions about that. He also talks about how Studio Ghibli operates, what they talk about during meetings and who they bring into those meetings, and he also talks about his interest interest in forests as well as aviation, and he compares both of those things to animation, which I loved. He also talks about some real-life events that snuck their way into some of his stories. In addition to a, a few pages from Miyazaki's sketchbook, you also get a short in-color comic called Dining in Midair, which I loved. It was about the history of in-flight meals. In Starting Point, he also goes over some of the changes that he wishes he could make right now to some of his finished films. For example, Nausicaa, which is a brilliant, brilliant film. I do have one critique of it, and finding out that he has the same critique of it made me appreciate the film more. And if you are a storyteller of any kind, Miyazaki gives you writing advice that actually works. It's not the kind of writing advice that you hear a lot, which is just do it, just write, just put your ideas out there. While it is true that the only writing advice you need is to just do it, it's really refreshing to read writing advice that is actually inspiring and makes you feel like you can finish a huge project that might have seemed overwhelming before. I know I feel a lot more inspired to write now that I've finished this book, and every time I read it I always feel like I can do these big projects that I have doubts about sometimes. In Starting Point, Miyazaki brings a lot of attention and value to the very first step in your storytelling process, that very first idea or string of ideas that you have for a project. I think initial ideas are often devalued and looked down upon, which is really unfortunate. There's this thought process that if you have the idea but not the project, 
it doesn't mean very much. But Miyazaki emphasizes the fact that these ideas that you have for your story, these very first ideas, they are monumental even if they don't exist outside of your own head yet. They do exist somewhere, which means they matter. One of my favorite stories in this book is about the Finnish inspector who Miyazaki knew. She dedicated so much of her time to her art, but in the process she also sacrificed sleep, health, and free time. I think this topic is important for creators of any kind to consider, because dedication to one's passion is so important but a line should be drawn somewhere. Can a line be drawn somewhere? In Starting Point, Miyazaki is honest about what motivates and inspires him and also doesn't sugarcoat what disappoints and distresses him. He talks about problems in the animation industry, the pros and cons of mass production, the large demand for anime, as well as different styles of animation that he dislikes as well as why he dislikes them. He's also vulnerable but brief about his family life and his role as a parent, and I can see a lot of readers wanting to know much more about that aspect of the book, but this book Book is much more about his work than his personal life. And with creative nonfiction, you get to decide what goes into your book and how much of that goes into your book. I do have to point out the parts of this book that didn't quite hit the mark for me or the parts that I was kind of confused about. Basically, there are a few statements that Miyazaki makes that remind me a lot of gender stereotyping, but at the same time, because the book is written and because I'm not hearing his voice, because I don't know him personally, it was difficult for me to understand if he really meant that or if he was being sarcastic. One of the reasons it was difficult for me to decipher whether or not what he said meant this or what he said meant that is because I consider all of his films very feminist. So if you've read this book or if you're planning on reading this book in the future, I would love it if you could comment below, uh, let me know what you thought about that. Part of the book because I'm still trying to figure out what he meant. If you could help me out, I would love that. So with all of that in mind, I am giving Starting Point 4.5 out of 5 stars. The only reason why I took 0.5 of a star away is because in the middle it slowed just a little bit. Not too much, but enough for me to be like, okay, let's pick it up a little bit. As far as content goes, it had everything that I wished for and more, and it exceeded every expectation I had on a book about animation. So much so, that I didn't even need any visuals like cells or character designs or screenshots. The text on its own covered everything that I needed it to for a primarily visual medium, and that's saying so much. I highly, highly recommend this book to storytellers of any kind, writers, animators, aspiring animators, film enthusiasts, and animation buffs, anyone who's interested in learning more about Japanese history, and of course, of course, anybody who is a fan of Hayao Miyazaki's films. I don't know if it's available in stores, but it is available on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description below. The second book, Turning Point, is also available on Amazon. Link in the description below. I am planning on reading that one. I do have it. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. Please let me know if you've read this, what you thought about it, or if you're planning on reading it, as well as what your favorite Miyazaki TV show or movie is. My favorite Miyazaki movie changes from time to time because they're all so wonderful. Right now, I'd have to say my favorite is Kiki's Delivery Service. I'll see you guys again soon for some book reviews, a room tour, a bookshelf tour, and a lot of other videos coming your way that will not be months and months and months from now. I promise you the next video will be uploaded much, 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 much sooner. It's more than a promise. It's a pinky promise. But seriously, thank you again for your understanding while I took a break from YouTube for a while. It's great to be back, and I will see you guys soon. Bye!